Hey guys, Pete here. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through my rig. My nice, compact, powerful Harky rig. I play through a Harky LH1000, 1000 watt head, and I play it through two high drive 210 cabinets. I also tend to use a Sansamp, uh, RBI. I'm gonna turn that off for our purposes of our demo today. And I love this little Fender tuner right up here along the top, all this in my rack. What I love about the high drive cabinets is they're light, they're portable, and um, they look pretty, pretty darn cool, I think, too. It's a great sort of option to be able to take them. It's easy to throw them in the back of the car. If I want to just take one, I can. It's a lot of flexibility and a lot of sound. The other thing is I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to play the Harky LH1000, which is 1,000 watts of power, 1,000 watts. With these two 500 watt cabs, it's much more power than most of us bar band bassists are ever going to need. But it looks good and it sounds good. I'm going to demo this uh, setup for you using six different basses so you can get a real feel for whatever you're playing. I got an American Standard 2008 Precision bass that I've done some modifications to. Steinberger Synapse bass. 2015 Gibson Thunderbird. 2015 Rickenbacker 4003S. 2015 Getty Lee US Jazz. 2014 American Design Experience with chrome flats on it. So let's start with the Harky equipment that's in this rig. We got the LH1000, 1000 watts of power. It is a tank. One of the reasons why I've changed from the other gear that I've used over the years, going through two 500 watt 210 cabinets. The sound of this thing blows you away. The amount of air it moves is amazing. And the other thing that I love about this, as a bar band bassist who's going in, getting out, trying to do our gigs and make it simple, is the simplicity that I got here on the front of this. But that being said, the simplicity is what makes this thing really work for me. And it sounds fantastic. If I want to get crazy with my settings, I'm going to do that on my Sans amp right up here to get a little bit of a different sort of tone. But if I'm looking for simple, which I am, when I'm, at, when I'm playing a bar gig, I want it to be simple and easy. When I'm looking for this stuff, I got volume, I got bass, I got mid, I got treble. What else do I need? I have a limiter here, which is a nice additional feature, and I got a balance here. So if I wanted to run both these speakers separately, I could, and I could put more tone or more sound in one or the other. Um, and of course, I have a bright switch, which my own personal preference is. I'm not going to use the bright switch that often, but I am going to, uh, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a taste of it. So why don't I start right now by giving you a little taste of the 2008 American Standard Precision Bass, my go-to bass, my numero uno bass. I'm just gonna play it. I got the standard, um, the, the, uh, the standard control settings. Um, as Larry has told me, and anybody who will listen, you go two on the bass, you go 10 on the mid, you go zero on the treble, and that's your flat line. So we're gonna start at flat. Sans amp is turned off, okay? I'm going through the two tens. I have the tweeter turned off, and I have my volume dimed, and I have my tone at about eight. So let's give a quick little listen to what this sounds like. I didn't do is I did not run the bright on. So let's give that just 
just a real quick listen with the bright switch on. The bright switch really makes a huge difference with this amp, and it's a taste thing. For me, I don't generally run the bright, but here's what it sounds like. Listen, not everybody plays just a simple bass line like that, so why don't I also take out a pick and we'll dime the volume and the treble, or the volume and the tone, and uh, we'll, just, uh, we'll just dig into it that way. Key bass with a pick, volume, tone at 10, flat line in my heart key, and go into 10. to how this bass or how this amp sounds with some flats on a P bass and give you a little bit of that classic tone. I got the tone set at about 50%. Let's hear what we get when we plug in a uh, jazz bass uh, into the same exact setup, not making any changes. We're going to actually run these pretty much dimed, right, just so we can get that, that, that sound. <laughs> Sans Amp RBI, I gotta try it, right? Here's if you're going for that Getty tone, right? And the heart key can pull this puppy off. LH-1000 does with a Reckenbacher 4003S. Let's pull up that vintage tone pot, pull out a pick, and see if we can't evoke a little bit of Chris Squire. Thunderbird is a special animal. Either you love it or you don't. I happen to be loving mine right now. Let's give a listen to what the Harky LH-1000 is going to do with this puppy.
different tone, tone a little bit more woody than you're going to get from the others. So for those of you that uh, did not get the memo, the 80s are done. Uh, we still have these things, and I got to admit, it's a funky looking bass. It gets a lot of comments at, at gigs, but the reality is nothing sounds like this thing, and it sounds great. So let's give it a little listen. six-year-old daughter is sitting on the floor directing this video <laughs> and she's telling me what do you think though what do you think they sound the same. <laughs> 